Hey everyone, welcome back to Daily Devotions. Pastor Steve here walking with you in God's Word. And we are in Joshua chapter 8. Joshua chapter 8, following God continually discipling his community, continuing to teach his community, continue to bid and invite his community, the Israelites, to trust, especially within Joshua. Um, as they've crossed over the Jordan, they're in the promised land, they're into this conquest, they go and take Jericho in such a unique way, T walls come tumbling down, uh, city is uh, given to the Israelites in many ways, and they continue to go on, but they don't. Because as soon as you stop following God's ways, you start to avert to your own ways, and that will not win. That will not succeed as God is teaching his community. And so as uh, we get to see Achan's sin and we get to see uh, the, uh, the coveting of certain things in and amongst the community, the stealing of certain things in and amongst the community, the broken commands of God in the community, there is consequences to that. And so as they take Achan out of the community, uh, they, they bring his sin out of the community so that they continue to go on. We get to see in Joshua chapter 8, that's where God is bidding them, inviting them to go. He turned from his fierce anger, and now he's just calling again, trust me, I'm going before you. I, the next city, as we go Jericho, and then I, um, is given to the Israelites. And so Joshua chapter 8, another invitation, again, to be able to follow the Lord into battle. Let's read together. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Take the whole army with you and go up and attack Ai. For I have delivered into your hands the king of Ai, his people, his city, and his land. You shall do to Ai and his kings as you did to Jericho and its king, except that you may carry off their plunder and livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the city. You see how the Lord doesn't just test, but just gives forward the way of battle. Gives forward the way of his commands. Jericho, you don't take anything. You just take Rahab and, and their families that you've promised and being able to just heed my command. But the, And then in this, I has been given over to you. Yet, what you wanted to do in Jericho, the sinful nature that you wanted to have, um, as Achan did, that will be yours as well. I'll give you that pleasure and that actually plunder for yourselves. And so when you go into Ai and destroy the city as you did to Jericho, take for yourselves what you weren't allowed in Jericho, but now you are in Ai. You see, it's always the Lord's bidding. It's always the Lord's command that you need to follow. So Joshua and the whole army moved out to attack Ai. He chose 30,000 of his best fighting men and sent them out at night with these orders. Listen carefully. You are, set to, you are to set an ambush behind the city. Don't go very far from it. All of you be on the alert. I and all those with me will advance on the city, and when the men come out against us, they, as they did before, we will flee from them. They will pursue us until we have lured them away from the city, for they will say, they are running away from us, as they did before. So when we flee from them, you are to rise up from ambush and take the city. The Lord your God will give it into your hand. When you have taken the city, set it on fire. Do what the Lord has commanded. See to it, you have my orders. Then Joshua sent, off, uh, sent them off, and they went to the place of ambush and lay in wait between Bethel and Ai, to the west of Ai. But Joshua spent that night with the people. Early the next morning, Joshua mustered his men, and he and the leaders of Israel marched before them to Ai. The entire force that was with him marched up and approached the city and arrived in front of it. They set up camp north of Ai, at the valley between them and the city. Joshua had taken about 5,000 men and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai, to the west of the city. They had the soldiers take up their positions, all those in the camp to the north of the city and ambush to the west of it. That night, Joshua went into the valley. When the king of Ai saw this, he and all the men of the city hurried out early in the morning to meet Israel in battle at a certain place overlooking the Arabah. But he did not know that an am ambush had been set against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel let themselves be driven back before them, and they fled toward the desert. All the men of Ai were called to pursue them, and they pursued Joshua and were lured away from the city. Not a man 
remained in Ai or Bethel, who did not go after Israel. They left the city open and went in pursuit of Israel. Then the Lord said to Joshua, Hold out toward Ai the javelin that, it is in, that is in your hand, for into your hand I will deliver the city. So Joshua held out his javelin toward Ai. As soon as he did this, the men in the ambush rose quickly from their position and rushed forward. They entered the city and captured it and quickly set it on fire. The men of Ai looked back and saw the smoke of the city rising against the sky, but they had no chance to escape in any direction, for the Israelites, who had been fleeing toward the desert, had turned back against their pursuers. For when Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city and that smoke was going up from the city, they turned around and attacked the men of Ai. The men of the ambush also came out of the city against them, so that they were caught in the middle, with Israelites on both sides. Israel cut them off, leaving them neither survivors nor fugitives. But they took the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. When Israel had finished killing all the men of Ai in the fields and in the desert where they had chased them, and when every one of them had been put to the sword, all the Israelites returned to Ai and killed those who were in it. Twelve thousand men and women fell that day, all the people of Ai. For Joshua did not draw back the hand that held out his javelin until he had destroyed all who lived in Ai. But Israel did carry off for themselves the livestock and plunder of this city, as the Lord has instructed Joshua. So Joshua burned Ai and made it a permanent heap of ruins, a desolate place to this day. He hung the king of Ai on the tree and left him there until evening, at sunset. Joshua ordered them to take his body from the tree and throw it down at the entrance of the city gate, and they raised a large pile of rocks over it, which remains to this day. Then Joshua built on Mount Abel an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel. As Moses, the servant of the Lord, had commanded the Israelites, he built it according to what is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones on which no iron tool had been used. On it, they offered to the Lord burnt offerings and sacrificed fellowship offerings. There in the presence of the Israelites, Joshua copied on stones the law of Moses, which he had written. All Israel, aliens and citizens alike, with their elders, officials and judges, were standing on both sides of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, facing those who carried it. The priests, who were Levites, half of the people, stood in front of Mount Gerizim, and half of them in the front of Mount Abel, as Moses, the servant of the Lord, had formerly commanded when he gave instructions to bless the people of Israel. Afterward, Joshua read all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses, just as written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded that Joshua did not read to the whole assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the aliens who lived among them. God fights your battles. But even in the midst of fighting his battles and having the wherewithal to be able to actually uh, put together that battle. God didn't tell them about the ambush, didn't tell them how to fight the battle, just sent them forth with a promise. You're going to win this battle. Joshua puts his mind and his leadership into action, and they take I. And they do as the Lord commanded. But even as they did as the Lord commanded, they got to see, they got to reap the blessings of the command of the Lord, that I was destroyed. But it's, it's pretty amazing what happens right afterwards. Joshua collects the people again in amongst kind of a, a mountaintop experience. Jericho is lay waste. I is lay waste. We get to see the Lord's hand before us. And so what does that call them to do? Worship God. Calls them to worship. Calls them to continue to heed the commands of God. Let it ever be before you, as Moses instructed them. Because as that goes before you, as the command of God goes before you, as the way of God goes before you, you are blessed. You are walking in the design of God. You are walking in the commands and statutes of God. And that's what he has for his community. Trusting. Hearing the laws and the statutes, but also the promises of God before the people. So that they're just not walking aimlessly, but they're walking in the commands, the statutes, the promises of God. May that be us, brothers and sisters in Christ. 
that this day we walk, yes, in the commands and the statutes, that we actually see that there is one God and we should worship him alone and that we shouldn't use his name in vain and we should remember the Sabbath day and we should love our neighbor as ourselves as we go through the, four, the second tablet and we get to see those commands and statutes before us and how beautiful they are. Not to fulfill them for our salvation, but fulfill them because the salvation has been won for us. God has won the battle over sin, death, and the power of the devil. So we walk this day in his commands, in his statutes, in his promises. Because this day we want to walk faithful to God. He is ever before us. He's leading us. He has the way. He is the truth. He is our way of life. Jesus, let us walk in the way of the Lord this day. For in it, what a blessing. Have a blessed day.